Hi, everyone. Thank you for watching. Thank you for stopping by. Thank you for subscribing to my channel at Carrie Williams. Thank you so much. I'm just super excited on this Tuesday evening, and I'm going to tell you why. I'm discovering Jamboard, and I'm very emotional right now because I am teaching um, remote learning. I'm, uh, I have a fourth grade uh, group of students uh, who are going into the middle school and, you know, they're, they're really trudging through this hard time in this pandemic, and they're trying to do the necessary work. And Jamboard is making it possible that they can interact so that they can interact with each other. They could see each other in live time. Um, they get to expose their own name on a platform like Jamboard. So, okay, so Jamboard is like a canvas, basically. And what you see on this screen is I'm sharing my screen. This is what you get. This canvas here, so it's not intimidating like some of the other programs um, that I've learned about. And Jamboard was a part of my recent professional development with Kiker Learning, um, and it was really, really instrumental. I started using it right away, so that's why I wanted to share. By all means, I am not a techie. I'm a novice learner to this. Um, I'm a, a teacher of 18 years, and I have a group of special learners that are trying to do their best. So here we go. This is the blank canvas right here. I'm going to try to use my pointer here. So this is a blank canvas in the term that you can use this canvas for whatever you want. It originally starts out white, and I'm just going to show you some of the tools on my page. So I started with the title, and I thought, how can I use this Jamboard effectively when I'm a novice? So I just started very simple. I wanted to bring social skills into the classroom, into this virtual classroom. So I had the students um, sharing about their weekend. So the title uh, was Jamming and Weekend Sharing. So um, that's basically the concept behind this Jamboard. Um, the tools over here are very self-explanatory pen. Um, there's different styles of the pen. I think there's like a fine line, a marker. It shows the different um, size and the different colors that you can use. And obviously that's what I use to just kind of extend the visual line from the question to the answer. For my students, you can change the color of the pen. It's pretty great. The eraser actually works um, efficiently. So basically you could just kind of erase something on this Jamboard. And for the sake of, I had a student that was on this Jamboard just now. So I don't want to erase anything yet, um, but you could just erase the line like a regular eraser. Um, this is kind of like the standard select button. Um, this is where I usually go to when I'm all finished using the tools over here. The sticky note is the most commonly used tool on my Jamboard right now, because that's just what I feel comfortable with using. And that's what I have my students use. Um, this Jamboard that we're looking at, um, the students have full editing access on it. Um, and there's some pros and cons to that. Um, just to finish off these two tools here, we have the adding image button. Um, this feature is amazing because you can typically, you can really add any image. Um, you can add a picture. You can't add video. I just got off YouTube actually um, trying to see, am I the only one who wants to <laughs> insert a video on here? So no, you can't add video right now, but there are some ways around it. Um, but for the sake of what these features offer right now, but you can add an image. So just think about that, you know, think about our uh, traditional textbooks. You just might want to take a picture with your smartphone um, anywhere around you. You know, you're on vacation, you're taking a nature walk, you're just hanging out with your family and you just, you know, you kind of reminisce. You know, teachers were always thinking about our classrooms and our students. Um, but it's nice because you could add any image on here. Just have the students think about it. I mean, you could do whatever you want with those images. Even um, an image of a math problem. I teach math. So just taking a screenshot or a computer uh, snippet um, of a math problem. And, and what I plan to do is I'm going to give them a math problem and just have some error analysis going on. You know, what did this student do wrong? Or, you know, where, where how would you approach the problem? Um, and lastly, it would be the laser tool. I like this tool. I don't know why. Um, it's not permanent. It's just a temporary visual to just remind the students, hey, here I am. I'm over here. Look over here. And then it just fades away. It's so cool. It's like a little, I don't even know, a little, woo wee. Okay. Because uh, I guess teaching my special learners, um, we know that visual is very important. So anyway, like I said, I'm going back to the standard select and um, I'm just going to go back. So let's just talk about um, what I was talking about before in terms of the students have 
this time for this particular Jamboard, I want all the students to have editing access so that they could see this in live time. So I want Tyrell to be able to have that access when Nyjah does so that they could see each other's responses right away. There are cons to this. I've learned my lesson and I'm telling you now that if students have full editing access, um, you could see just like a random, this is what I saw, I'm gonna show you actually. I saw a random, woo, all over. And I just kind of like, I don't know. I was like, who is doing that? Who is doing that? And because they have the full um, access, you know, I had to fix it. I had to edit it. And the good thing is, as I'm moving with this target, um, th with the eraser, you could see when the student is moving and doing those things, you could see their icon. So I, I tell them, I said, you know, I can see you. I can see your avatar, your icon. Um, and then they kind of get freaked out and they stop doing it. Um, but again, it is real time. It's 634 at night. Can a student come on this Jamboard and start, you know, editing my words? Absolutely. So you have to be mindful of that. And what I just did was research ways th um, to go around that. And the only thing that I came up with is one, thinking um, like an educator, you can use this for citizenship. You know, let's think about what is right or wrong when no one's looking. Um, so that's um, obviously an option. And then secondly, I decided to make a copy of this Jamboard. And I'm going to keep that copy because the weekend sharing is over. It's pretty much a done deal. So if I made a copy, I can really just remove this ultimately. Um, and if you go to the three dots up here, I think it actually, yeah, it gives you a trash can. So you could just um, basically remove it. So let's just go back. And I want to just show you where you even start doing your Jamboard. Um, so I call this the waffle. I go to my waffle. And again, I am just a novice. And I'm excited to use this Jamboard because it's practical and it's easy to use. So you would click Jamboard. So did you see that? That was a um, yellow and orange note, like a little symbol. Um, so when you click that, it's going to bring you to your Jamboard dashboard, your headquarters, your home. And it's going to show you all the other jams that you made. That's what they call it, jams. I, I'm totally a novice. All right, anywho, so this was the copy. Remember I told you I made a copy? So this is the copy that I made. I plan on deleting this um, because they can go back and edit. So that is just a red flag right there. Um, just to show you an example, one of my first jams, I, um, I made a math jam and this is what it looks like. My computer's pretty slow. I have a lot of tabs open. Um, so... Since I teach summer school math, our time is very limited and we're on a tight schedule. And I wanna give them just a small amount of problems, um, but just add more visuals, more manipulatives. Um, so this was really um, a fun way to get them to brainstorm um, about math. Okay, it says processing request, here we go. So like I was saying before, when you're adding the image also, you can add an image to a math problem. Now, I know this seems like a lot in all of this, all of these post-it notes, but I can tell you why it looks like that. Hi, okay, so there was one other thing that I forgot to share with you, um, and that was the use of the other tools on the top of the bar here. So in terms of magnifying and you know zooming into your screen, I like to use the peace sign on the mouse pad and that kind of just zooms in enough for me, but everyone has different, you know, um, different styles of computers. So, but that is a, I wish it was more, I don't know, I wish it was more one touch thing, um, but yeah, you can just, you know, choose your specifications for zooming in. And uh, what I do like is the background. You don't have many options. Maybe I'm missing something. Like I said, I'm, I'm still learning, um, but this blue is very pretty. I've used that before, but with a simple click here, you can um, change the background color. Um, what's also nice, you can make it grids. Uh, it has a grid and especially with um, my students now, we're doing math. So I might use that with area. Um, if I clear the frame, I don't wanna press that just because I have students working on this um, document. 
But basically, I just wanted to show you um, some of the tools and some of the features at the top of this video. So again, thank you for sticking around. And hopefully I helped. Have a great day. Hi. Okay. So there was one other thing that I forgot to share with you. Um, and that was the use of the other tools on the top of the bar here. So in terms of magnifying and, you know, zooming into your screen, I like to use the P sign on the mouse pad and that kind of just zooms in enough for me, but everyone has different, you know, um, different styles of computers. So, but that is a, I wish it was more, I don't know, I wish it was more one touch thing. Um, but yeah, you can just, you know, choose your specifications for zooming in. And uh, what I do like is the background. You don't have many options. Maybe I'm missing something. Like I said, I'm, I'm still learning, um, but this blue is very pretty. I've used that before, but with a simple click here, you can um, change the background color. Um, what's also nice, you can make it grids. Uh, it has a grid and especially with um, my students now, we're doing math. So I might use that with area. Um, if I clear the frame, I don't wanna press that just because I have students working on this. Um, document. But basically, I just wanted to show you um, some of the tools and some of the features at the top of this video. So again, thank you for sticking around. And hopefully I helped. Have a great day.